Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions and awesomers.com. Back in the chair is Steve Simonson. This week, we've got something very, very interesting uh, that Steve would like to go over. I'll pick through the bones and ask loads of questions along the way, but it's uh, it's a very interesting thing and I definitely think it's on on topic where you people would like... Um, Coffeezilla and there's different people in the space that have a different approach to things and I think what Steve wants to get across is the mindset and, and the where's and why's and how to protect yourself on this so Steve do you want to start taking up part of the story here yeah so first of all uh it's nice to be back uh thanks Danny for the uh the invite I always enjoy being in the chair as it were <laughs> uh and uh yeah I'm glad everybody's you know joining us today and I want to talk about some of the the realities that that this so-called Dunning-Kruger effect, it's a psychological effect. We're going to talk about it, not from a medical basis, or I'm not a psychologist. Uh, I just play one on TV. The, the reality is we all, as humans, have the potential to exhibit this kind of behavior hmm. or at least see and observe this kind of behavior. And I guarantee, hmm. absolutely guarantee, every single person in the Amazon space selling has seen this exact uh, situation, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And and I'm going to talk about what it looks like and, and we'll get into some of the nitty gritty of it as well. Yeah. Cool. Should we bring up the slide? Or yeah, the... I, uh, yeah. First, uh, I'm going to get on my glasses so that I look extra smart today. Uh, yeah. It turns out, Danny, that uh, once you turn 50, reading glasses become a, a thing. And so right. uh, I'm putting those on. Cool. I've got about five years and three months to go, and I'll be joining you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's let's bring this up into the stream here. Let's bring this in the picture as well. I'll see if cool. I can make this any bigger here. Uh, there you go. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about this graph, uh, and and you can help me describe it for podcast listeners who can't see the screen. Yeah. But essentially what you have on one side of the graph is confidence. You know, this mm. is how confidence the individual talking about a topic is. And let's just imagine that it's it's somebody talking about selling on Amazon, right? And uh, the graph immediately goes from 0% confidence and 0% experience up to where somebody thinks that they have 100% confidence. Oh, I got this is, is kind of how they describe it. And that from going zero to a hundred percent, that's really where gurus live at the top of Mount stupid, uh, mm -hmm. as, as, uh, the general phrase, I didn't come up with that. That's kind of the general, um, effect that people, uh, see and observe with this Dunning Kruger situation. And then as actually, as they gain more experience from the top of that graph, it goes down from a hundred percent and inexorably down to the very bottom where, uh, they call that the Valley of despair, where people think I will never get this, right? This is so complex. This is so hard. I never expected any of this. Um, I'm surprised routinely. And and then only after you have enough experience does your confidence kind of return hmm. where you get back to not 100% because anybody who actually knows what they're doing has experience knows there's always more to it. There's always more problems to be solved. But you get to a point where you're like, I got this really for sure this time. It's easy because I'm just in the problem solving business. That's kind of the the uh, the curve from, you know, 100% ignorance to now mm. I have knowledge. And so I can be confident that I can handle whatever comes at me. I just don't think that I know it all. Is yeah. that what do you think about that description? Yeah, it, it makes sense. It's just like the where's and the why is how do we get there? Like you call it Mount Stupid, right? But there's there are people out there who are just rogues, right? And then there's deluded, stupid people with without self-awareness and there's people out there who may mean well and then think oh shit i've gone in too deep because they're faked it until they tried to make it so th there's, there's different paradigms there i would say for sure and in every single case this is this is what i find most interesting about the um you know this psychological concept called the dunning kruger effect right hmm. is it doesn't actually matter what what mindset you go in with, right? You don't have to have malice. You don't have to have ill intent. You can just be dumb, right? Yeah. And and it's not that you're dumb and intentionally trying to uh, mislead yourself. And th this is the irony is on top of Mount Stupid, you kind of actually believe all the nonsense that's filled in your head that you've got, yeah. you know, all the answers, even though you have almost no experience. And 
this can be a, a side effect of just, you know, having something work for you. For example, if, if you're an Amazon seller and you happen to launch your first product and it's a supplement or, you know, it's, uh, you know, something really hot and really popular, you're in the right place at the right time. You may think to yourself, well, gosh, I'm a genius. I, you know, mm -hmm. I hear all these launch stories and people suck, but look mm -hmm. at me, I'm a genius. And then you launch something else that does well. And listen, you can even be successful and you'll still go through the same kind of cycle of learning. And that's that's kind of the point of this whole thing is you can be a confident idiot, mm. right? And still be both successful or or you know less successful. It doesn't matter. You can be confident idiot on the top of Mount Stupid, but eventually as experience grows, as you face real challenges of business, the that valley of despair will happen and or often happens anyway. You, most people mm. don't use these terms yet. Um, but over time, then experience and confidence kind of, uh, they align together. And that's, that's where I see Amazon sellers who lack that experience and in the Valley of Despair are most vulnerable to the, the, uh, ding dong gurus sitting at top of Mount Stupid who don't actually know anything. That's the problem I have. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. And I, I mean, we've got people in the industry, they'll name names and calling out. But our, our thing here, what we're looking at is education, because we don't want to see the next run of Amazon sellers or current run of Amazon sellers being sold to and then being ripped off. And, you know, so it's important for people to understand the concept. So to do this, what what is the best way for people to protect themselves, to, to avoid, you know, you're always going to come in contact with these scammers. Right. But how do you set the boundary and avoid that situation? What's the best workaround you see? Well, it's it starts with my own uh, ride on this graph of Mount mm -hmm. uh, Stupid. Right. I'm yep. I'm smart enough to know that I'm stupid and yep. I shouldn't just assume that what everybody tells me, no matter mm -hmm. how confident they sound, mm -hmm that I need to take that with a grain of salt. I need to do some research. I need to, to find out some additional information. And we know that, you know, kind of social proof, you know, getting somebody on camera to say, I love this thing. This is the best thing ever is not that hard to get, right? No, just pay people, pay, people get paid on Fiverr. We've seen it time and time again, haven't we? So it's, yeah, by the way, a total violation of FTC laws in America. I'm sure there's other mm -hmm. laws around UK and so forth uh, uh, around the world, honestly, that forbid such things. But we, so we can't just take social proof at its at its core, which means you actually have to do a little bit more research, a little bit more work. Maybe you actually talk to you know some happy customers. You find out, hey, how did you meet this um, program or guru or what have you? And you really get to the heart of it because often what I have uh, observed is, you know, when I'm trying to find out more about something, I got I have no problem. I want to be clear with folks. I have no problem with arming yourself with valuable education providers, with valuable um, information providers, paid or unpaid is secondary to me. Hmm. It's just a question of, uh, do they have the experience? Do they have the uh, expertise? Do they have the resources that they need to be uh, successful and therefore help me be successful downstream? Yeah, that and makes sense. I should point out that even as people learn about the Dunning-Kruger effect, they're going to take the same graph <laughs> journey, right? They'll go, okay, now I get Dunning-Kruger, so now I know it all. I'm a confident idiot. Now I trust no one or I trust everyone or whatever criterion you decide that is important to you, you're going to sit at the top of Mount Stupid for a minute until you realize, okay, hang on, uh, this is tougher than I thought. And then downstream, you'll get a sense. You'll kind of get a gut feel for – not just you know gurus, but just kind of uh, hiring people, any of this stuff. You, this is where you you cross in from. This is super simple. I got this. Uh, you know, uh, again, living as a confident idiot, all the way over to I'll never get this. That's the imposter syndrome that just you feel like you'll never shake. To actual, I've done enough repetitions of this. I've ran enough laps. I get it. You know, I, I'm not going to. Um, assume that I know it all, or in fact, knowing what you don't know, this is a phrase that comes up, is probably one of the most important things. Yeah. I always say to people, and I try and maintain this myself, is being a student of the game. It's like always be asking the question rather than trying to pass off like I'm some sort of master, because I just think 
no one can know everything. I think what you're saying, I know nothing about nothing or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember the exact phrasing. But I definitely think, and that's because of a curious nature. And I'm sure that I probably overstepped the mark in, in time. Like, I've probably been to Mount Stupid, but I didn't go in to Mount Stupid. Like, I'll give you an example. Back in 2008, I was approached by uh, someone from the Gold District in the UK to set up an online music magazine forum. And our conversation was, uh, we're going to set up this online uh, music magazine and uh, forum. And I said, what the F do I know about the internet? And he said, don't worry, you will learn. And then we burnt for about half a million quid in a couple of years and then end up with burnout, small team, no revenue and everything else. But it was the best learning experience, as painful as it was, trying to keep the doors open, the slow clap of death of the team leaving. I was absolutely clueless. And the distance between knowing nothing and knowing something is huge online when you haven't done it. But I didn't go in and blag it. It was I was approached because I was from the music industry at that time. He wanted to marry the Internet and music together. Does that make sense? Oh, it totally does. And I can identify with that story in a 100 different ways. And mm. I'm not even saying don't tackle something you don't know. Right. Mm. If, if you are a relatively new seller and you hear this conversation, if your takeaway is, oh, crap, you know, uh, maybe I don't know anything. The, hmm. the, the whole point is the journey, right? You may start, um, and, and again, it doesn't matter if it's your personal journey. I love starting with humility, by the way. I think that hmm. that kind of uh, takes the top off of Mount Stupid pretty fast because yeah. you just start and go, I, I literally, my axiom zero is, I don't know nothing about nothing, as you uh, quoted, and I'll be sending you a bill for a trademark infringement there shortly. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, the, the point is, if you start with a little humility and go, you know, I really don't know anything. You, the, your music story, starting that magazine, the internet, et cetera, yeah. you said going in, I don't know anything, right? Yeah. That, that frees you from some, I don't know, self-imposed, um, burden of saying, yes, I should have all the answers. I go into meetings today, hmm. every day and go, yeah. all right, I don't know what to do. What do you guys think we should do? And now I, my experience is right on the other side going, that smells weird. I don't like that. And I'll give you a quick example. Uh, we've been, you know, we have some websites selling PPE. I didn't expect to be in the PPE business, uh, you know, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, whatever it was when I bought this, uh, uh, dental supply company, but we're in it in a, in a huge way, you know, more than a million dollars worth of purchases just in the past several weeks. And I knew going in, I didn't know anything. So I, I had no problem, you know, getting to the top of Mount Stupid, planting a little uh, lawn chair and enjoying the view, right? But I wasn't running around telling anybody I knew anything. I waited. And uh, so we got an order uh, recently, I think it was in the last couple of weeks. And the order smelled like fraud to me. It mm. just, you know, you just kind of knew it had some fraud flags, but it wasn't overt. So we asked the customer for their, their identification. This is not on Amazon because Amazon has a lot of the PPE still locked down. And even though we have the COVID approvals, it's still hard. Anyway, I'll stay on track here. Bottom line is my gut said, this looks like um, fraud. So we asked the customer for ID. We asked him for all the support info. And so I approved the order. And of course, you know, two weeks later, my instinct was right. It was in fact fraud. And, mm. um, and after we approved that one and shipped that one, we got a bunch of others, which only reconfirmed what I already knew when I was, uh, you know, over at the top. So the, you know, no matter what situation you face, we'll all carry on with this journey where it's, I think it's how you go into it that mm. makes all the difference of how fast you come out of it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I mentioned this off call. It's almost like there's a training out there, especially between Internet marketers where don't worry, write a course on that. You only just need to know 15 percent more than the dummies you're selling it to. <laughs> and then add a little bit of NLP in there, some manipulation and, uh, you know, morals in the in the in the bin. Suddenly you've got quite a successful business, but it's high churn. And then it comes back to empathy. Right. So. When I look at these people that scam people, it's like, how do you put your head on the pillar at night? Well, that's easy. If you don't have empathy, you can't feel that pain of others. Therefore, you can sleep well. 
Does that make sense? So there's there's some coordinates that can be added there. There's the Mount Stupid thing. There's people finding ways to turn people over. And the characteristics of the person plays a role as well, right? So if they have got lack of self-awareness, they've got um, full of self-importance, you know, that kind of carries the way through. You know, maybe they've been taught, like, you know, fake it till you make it and, like, literally have taken it on. But, um, yeah, it just fascinates me how this plays out over and over again. And we see quite often, you know, sellers are still being taken for a ride. And it's like, what do we do about that? Well, this is this is the, the I suppose, the next level of the discussion, which is mm. now that we kind of understand that this this exists mm. and there there is a point where, you know, there's kind of unexpected ignorance, you know, right? A, a guru may go into something and go, you know, hey, yes, I really do feel confident. I really do feel um, excellent. And so I'm going to sell a course or I'm going to do this or that. Uh, and then it crosses into that that stage where I find it immoral as well, right? I, I hmm. cannot sleep at night if I think that I'm not delivering actual value. It's a it's a personal defect. I don't know what to tell you, uh, but not everybody has such a defect. And so there are plenty of people who who now they don't look at, you know, the Dunning Kruger effect as uh, a downside. They look at it as all I have to do is focus on, you know, all these, you know, trigger words, all these things that I know will get people to feel confident. I prey on their own valley of despair right They're in their own journey. And when they're in that valley of despair, that's when they're they're most vulnerable to you know looking for silver bullets. And I suppose that's probably my number one piece of advice. Hmm. When you are faced with a problem, when you're faced with you know some situation, don't expect to make one single decision or make one single purchase of a course and have that be the the, the game changer, as so many of them you know uh, proclaim. It's it's a thousand tiny things that you do over time that actually result in positive momentum. Yeah. And, you know, the difference, you know, how we define success, you know, probably should be analyzed and so forth, because it, it's not just whether or not a business turns over revenue. Right. It's, you know, is it actually profitable? Right. That should be a, a reasonable metric. Is this something that is sustainable? Right. Because if you can only do this for, you know, a, a year or two years, then th that was really more of just a, an experiment, not a, an actual business per se. Yeah. So just knowing that, you know, if you're in that valley of despair or you're on that journey down from Mount Stupid towards, you know, experience where now it just, it's easy to start a business. You know, I have to say when people ask me about starting a business, I'm like, it's easy, you know, just do step one through 194. I, I don't know what the problem is, right? I, I can't even see, the fog in the Valley of Despair, because I'm I'm not on top of Mount Stupid. I'm on top of, you know, uh, Hill Experience, right? It's not quite as tall as Mount Stupid, because I know there's a lot of things I don't know. But starting a business for me, I'm 30 years in, not that hard. I, I really do feel it's easy. And and I look at my friends or whoever I'm talking to, and they're like, it doesn't seem easy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. and so there's different parts of this journey where we all find ourselves. And uh, as I start, um, you know, new journeys, I told you about the PPE where we're starting a, a hand sanitizer factory in Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, I am being destroyed in the Valley of Despair. Let me just tell you. So we all are on the journey in different parts of our lives, but it, our awareness of that journey is what is our first defense. Yeah. Can I just uh, say some hellos and re uh, respond to some comments and stuff here? So Facebook user says, hello, Danny and Steve. Elchin's back. Hello, uh, Danny and Steve. Nice to see you. Side B says, good afternoon, gents. How do I get to the plateau of plenty? And then he's followed up with every day's a school day. Then we've got uh, Matt Parker. I believe in persistent pays. I am right in believing the key to success within the or process is smashing through the valley of despair. And I presume that is the toughest part where many fail. Should we answer that? Yeah. What was the first part of that? I can't see it on my screen. Yeah, no, because it's uh, it hasn't come up in um, Streamyard. Okay, uh, it's on my page. It's Matt Parker says I believe. Hold on, I just dropped out there. Where has that gone? Oh, I've lost that. Stay there, Matt. Have you removed your comment there? One second. 
just lost it there. Let I me think see I, I got the gist. Uh, it was, uh, I thought it was uh, about systems and process. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I've got it in the feed. Right. I believe in persistence pays. Am I right in believing the key to success within the process is smashing through the valley of despair? And I presume this is the toughest part of where most people fail. Yes. So I, I generally agree with that, right? So persistence mm. really is the key to any entrepreneurial endeavor. So I, I just switched to, to another graph just to, to put some a different nomenclature on it. W without So first of all, it doesn't matter where in the Dunning-Kruger effect you personally are. Mm. You also need to consider where that other person is, right? If you're hiring an expert, and it doesn't matter if this is a guru selling you something or a service provider you selling you something. You know, Danny, you're in the service business. I have uh, mm. products of us with Kevin. You know, we're any business that you offer some sort of service to, this is how you should measure them and go, all right, where are they on their journey? Do they mm. have what I need in that can deliver me to the so-called plateau of sustainability? Or I think uh, Sai talked about the plateau of plenty, right? Mm -hmm. Any yeah. of this is, that's kind of that that level past the the pain where you know that pain's just part of your day. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I, I definitely say persistence and then systemization, right? All of that to kind of make it more predictable. Every piece of it helps you cope with it. So it's knowing where you are on a particular topic in the Dunning-Kruger effect, mm -hmm. but also observing and trying to gather evidence where your your service provider or your your savior, right? Because we all still look for the silver bullet, by the way. I still mm. look for the silver bullet. I don't know why. 30 years. Yeah. But I still, I'm like, oh, maybe this one. If I just do it and we talk ourselves into it. Well, it's yeah. only 20 grand. If I spend 20 grand, I get 100 grand. What am I crying about, right? Mm. I would be a fool not to, right? And then you start listening to some of the social media and they're like, you would be a fool not to do this. You know, what if you could 5X your money, right? And next thing you know, I'm spending money on the next uh, turtle wax-based cryptocurrency and I have to tell you, it may not go as high as I expected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So effectively, what we're talking about is peak of Mount Stupid is the is let's say the scammy marketer, right? And the value of despair is you communicating with that marketer because you want to work a four hour work week or you hate your job, etc. So part of those peaks is the playoff there, isn't it? Is that they want to find you at your vulnerable best in their eyes to then manipulate you into selling whatever that may be an ebook course whatever it is yes exactly so if for example just to recast the the description mm -hmm. you just gave if there is uh, a guru at the top of mount uh, you know at the very peak mm -hmm. of mount stupid they are a confident idiot they don't yeah. have the credentials they don't have the 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 goods to actually help mm -hmm. anyone and if you're in the valley of despair that up there looks pretty good right that yeah. that that it's a it's the a vision land. to you, yeah, but it's it's a false. It's it's like that, you know, uh, mirage in an oasis. It's absolutely yeah. not going to help you. So uh, my whole point is, if if we have the humility ourselves to go, I don't know nothing about nothing. What can I learn? How can I use data and facts to make a decision versus mm -hmm. just pure emotions? And yeah. I, I do love the gut of an entrepreneur, as I just told you, my gut was right about that credit card deal. Yeah. I even told my team, I'm like, you know, this feels like like fraud. But mm. they provided a, an identification card. It matched everything. It didn't look Photoshop to me, but, you know, that's the best Photoshop jobs. So, <laughs> uh, you know, once again, I learned a lesson and we just cut off those, you know, various countries, uh, you know, more, more prevalent in fraud. So our, I and any of us that are in the learning curve part of it, you know, whether it's the valley of despair or the I don't know nothing and you're moving towards wisdom and moving towards that, they call it in this graph, a slope of enlightenment. Mm. We should judge each of the relationships we have, including this one, right? You and yeah. I have experience. Where people decide that we are on this graph is up to them. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest that uh, I'm wearing reading glasses, everybody. That means I'm old, which gives me wisdom. And that is why I know what I'm talking about. Although not as a psychological expert, but as a observation of humans and uh, for the last you know 30 years in business. So other than that, when was the last time you, you know, you got caught out oh. other than the, 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 what's it called? The card thing, which you got a gut feel for, but you were like, we'll have a punt on this and see where it went. 
There's one right now. I, you know, we, we're trying to open up additional supply chains around the world. There's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that happening in this world uh, besides, you know, gurus preying on vulnerable, you know, uh, would be entrepreneurs, emerging entrepreneurs, I like to call them. Hmm. And, you know, uh, one of the things is there's a supplier that I have that I'm trying to develop in Poland. And there's 50% chance that they've scammed me out of my deposit and 50% chance that they're real. Hmm. I don't know which yet. I, yeah. I have a small valley of despair problem because <laughs> I've wired some money and I've done you know more than the average bear would do in terms of vetting and, and we're pretty good at this. But uh, you know there, there's some valley of despair here. Now, there's a chance that I'll come out of it and, and this will we'll see its, its way through, but it, the deal is a little too good to be true. Uh, there's a lot of fraud in various parts of the world, and and it's not I'm not picking on Poland per se, but this is a um, it has the potential to be uh, a, a scam. Mm. But I'm so desperate for this product, I'm kind of willing to take that risk. That's that's yeah. how I got here. So I knew going in that this was a possibility, and now I just hope that uh, that I'm not you know taken advantage of. Yeah. I think one of the things that stands out for me in this is where, you know, when you just smell a rat and it was pre getting into Amazon, I think it was about 2014. And you know, when you're kind of looking around at things and suddenly I'll get this invite through the door to go to this, um, this big convention thing. Um, it was in a hotel for about a thousand or so people. Can't remember exactly what it was, but the guy was uh, charisma on the stage and everything else and was, was sat down. And uh, he wanted to get everyone up dancing and shaking hands and jumping up and down. And you know me, Steve, I'm sitting there thinking, what the fuck is going you on here? You were leading the dancing, I assume. No, no, no. I'm looking around <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm not doing this. This this is just not me. It's like I sat there for like half an hour and they're all jumping up and down rejoicing. And I'm like, no, nah, not having none of this. This is just, this doesn't add up. And then like the guy on the stage is like very charismatic and, I took all these details down and looked him up on com company's house, you know. It weren't until after. But, you know, when you're like, is this person on to something here? This looks really interesting. But it was just all the NLP stuff that done me. I can't do it. I can't abide by it. Uh, you won't get me jumping up and down and shaking hands. And, yeah. Right. And every just... part of that is programming the, yeah. the uh, yeah. you know, in that case, the potential customer. It's getting, exactly. Getting your wallet to dance out your pocket. They're telling right. you they, they're suffering you up for the sale, you know. Well, I didn't the get number one yeah. thing really to think about is if somebody operates their business by going from town to town like a snake oil salesman, you got to yeah. start asking yourself, is this a legit thing, right? Is yeah. now there are some that like I, I know this motivation company, this uh, or negotiation company, that's how they've done their seminars for the last 45 years, right? And mm -hmm. if you want to learn negotiation, they're really good at it. So that there, there's a legit thing. But you so you go, oh, well, these people operate out of a hotel, which means they're fly by night, gone tomorrow, et cetera. They only want me to pay with a, uh, a bank transfer or cash. That's not so yeah. good because my credit card, at least I can back charge if I'm being scammed. Right. There's mm -hmm. all of these various pieces of the puzzle. But uh, ultimately, if their business is, you know, a here today, gone tomorrow, that's that's not great for you. And looking mm -hmm. them up on company house or just searching the Internet to see if you're being scammed. I think all of those are reasonable. Yeah, uh, where are the places people can look? Is it uh, for staff? It's glass doors. There's a few places, isn't there, where you can check for reviews. Depends in which country. And obviously Yelp in the US and things like that. But um, it's definitely worth looking into the background. I always think that um, even when people are using that kind of manipulation stuff, you can't master gut. Like, so what happens is someone uses that manipulation, but your gut still says, hmm. But your head's being – does that make sense? It totally you know, you does. Get feel, you get a feel for it. And I think what people got to remember, no matter what goes on, go and read some books on it to like, to protect yourself from that. But there is – there's a lot of mind control stuff that people can end up doing, and you can't fake the gut. Because, okay. like, let's just say someone's killing you with kindness and being over – what's the word for it? You know, paying you too many compliments. And you're like, well, hold on, this doesn't doesn't sound right. Do you see what I mean? And you don't get it. But you know it's your gut. And I think what happens is people forget that. So I always say to everyone, just like, 
if your gut says it's not right, it's not right. Yeah, you can't Danny, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And by the way, shall I say that you look marvelous today and your voice is sultry oh, and you. silky smooth. Uh, really, you. everything you got going is absolutely perfect. I, I have nothing but compliments for you. Oh, that's amazing. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, where do I, write the, where do I uh, put the card detail? you got a Stripe, yeah? Set up. That's so right. Please, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, actually, I prefer cash because Stripe can be charged back. Uh, okay. So uh, Sai actually makes an interesting point, and I'm, I'm going to tie yeah. this in uh, to Sai's point. Um, you know, he talks about, hey, cool graph fits anything we do, not just business. You go through this one, learning an instrument or language. That's absolutely the point, right? Mm. So any of us, when we're, it doesn't matter if you're learning a language or you're learning how to sell on Amazon or you're learning how to do Google AdWords or you're learning how to do, you know, Amazon uh, sponsor products. It, it doesn't matter what it is. We all are going to face this, this kind of reality. Yeah. It happens when you hire people, everything this is applicable to. And to, to get back to that point that you're making about gut versus the, the head, right? The intellect the intellect can get twisted around a bit and the gut's still there to balance. You go, wait a minute, something doesn't smell right. I, and all of the things that the, um, the, the, you know, present presenters, like the guys on the hotel you're talking about, everything they're doing is to get the gut out of the equation. They mm. want you to feel good. Right. So jump up and have a good time. Right. That doesn't work on me, by the way, I'm the mm. worst, uh, jump up and, and, you know, dance with people. Uh, uh Tony Robbins uh, has zero impact to me. Uh, and I'm not even suggesting he's a good guy or bad guy. I have no, uh, no, uh, dog in that fight, but I can tell you that I, I'm not going to be disarmed. I, I go in a little defensive on those situations, but all of their objection overcoming is to get past your, uh, your gut. So, uh, I quite agree with uh, Sai on that. And then, well, well, let me get your comments. What do you think about the, that, Danny? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I think it plays out in every part. I just think it's um, it's interesting how people operate, and this model affects everyone, like from a good person to someone who lacks self-awareness, someone who's – I mean, you, let's go back to staff, right? How many times have we employed people that have blagged it in the interview? Brilliant at doing interviews, but – just don't deliver, don't know how to execute. Yeah, can't run a bar for let alone a business. We've seen it over and over again. And then you've got to clear up that mess. Now, where does that come from? Is it the parents, uh, you know, because he come number 15 in the egg and spoon race, he got an award or what? Where does that? Boy, I don't know. I, I don't know where it comes from per se, but a, a lot of it has to do with our own predisposition or our own need, right? Yeah. So when, when you have somebody and you're desperate to hire for the position, there's a scent probably of desperation in the air, right? Mm. Uh, it's maybe the same, same idea when you're dating, right? There, if you're putting off that desperate sense, then the other person has a much easier time speaking as a confident idiot, potentially, to mm. just kind of run through you and, and just have a go at, you know, kind of painting a picture that needs to be painted. And the next thing you know, they didn't actually know anything. And you will, you didn't actually do the work to check the references or you didn't do the work to, to give them uh, aptitude tests or what other other tests would be relevant to validate their their skills or or you didn't put them in a position to um, you know tell you things often I find entrepreneurs for example all they do during an interview is talk hmm. and they should be doing very little talking and mostly questions and then you know hearing the the answers to those questions so you know that is that's kind of a cross section of our own desperation you know hmm. we need somebody and our own unwillingness to do the work. And that, you know, many entrepreneurs, we face this problem. We yeah. can't do it all. So we kind of half-ass a bunch of things that we do in our day. And that's that's sometimes just life, by the way. That's sometimes just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually hired someone for a short-term project. It was just like, uh, I won't name the company because that'd be unfair. But I, I hired someone who was meant to have the goods, paid them over the top or not over the top, but higher rate because I just like wanted them to get on with it. After about a week, you were realized it wasn't going anywhere. And I'm like, where, where are the results? Is like none. And it was because it was a short timeline and it was based on, yeah, I can do this. Don't worry. We've got this, 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 this. and nothing like zero deliverables. And I, I had two options. I'm like, do I let it go now and, you know, and just burn the cash, which is fine. Or do I say to him, look, nothing's happened. Put some skin in the game. I'll cut your wages in half. 
and they took it straight away. So obviously I badly negotiated because I was in a rush to get something, a position to be filled for a short-term project. It didn't work out, but they stayed on to the end on half the wages, which was still very good by their standards. But it just worked out that I hadn't done enough because I was in too much of a rush to fill that position, even though it was short-term. So the damage wasn't done in the sense of um, – it wasn't someone who's put in full time and they're like nine or le- nine or 10 months in and you've got all the other, you know, red tape that comes with, with employees and stuff. So you have to be very careful there. Um, where else do you think, you know, this fits in? Because I see Richard Branson, I think he says like, you know, just say yes. And that's another scary thing that you got. If someone like Branson will just say, don't know, you've not done it, just say yes. And then you can work it out along the way. Is that valid? Well, you know, I, I've uh, th- there's there's a kind of a balance between, you know, are you up for a challenge? Can you figure mm-hmm. it out? And yeah. are you just trying to muddle your way through, expecting somebody else to dig you out of a jam, right? Yeah. And so, I, I again, like I I could tell you firsthand, you know, w- we have this situation uh, in America and around the world where there's not enough hand sanitizer in the world. So yeah. I called one of my friends. He's got a factory. All those workers in that factory are laid off right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got another factory. All those workers are laid off in that factory. There's 75 American workers in Wisconsin who do not have a job right now because COVID is destroying what's happening with that, that mm-hmm. business and, and yeah. many of our businesses. I, I'm in a, a segment of that business myself. So we're not in love with that particular business right now. They, they, mm-hmm. you know, We're being devastated by essentially the government closing those um, closing our outlets to sell product to. And I'm not going to get into the politics of open or close or who shot Johnny. That That's just not, it doesn't profit me to, to analyze that. So yeah. as we looked at it, we're like, well, if there's a shortage and we have kind of a factory mostly set up and we have workers available, what if right now, and instead of me being a confident idiot, well, I'll tell you where I was a confident idiot on the top of Mount Stupid here in a minute, but we don't go in and say, we have all the answers. We go in and say, what are all the questions we need to ask, hmm. right? So we don't even know the answers yet. We need to know the questions. And we just started down a path. Now we have years of experience. My partner in this, he's got 40 years of running factories around the world. So he knows, all right, I know how to make it, right? And we put a bunch of experts in the field. And we know we're going to make mistakes. And almost every day we're in business in the morning and we're out of business by noon. And then we're back in business either later that night or the next morning. Uh, Honestly, (laughs) it was literally 48 hours ago. The FDA made a new rule about Hmm. uh, hand sanitizer and we were out of business again after spending, you know, mid six figures, low, low to mid six figures on equipment, retrofitting, uh, all kinds of things, calling some workers back you know, extraordinary investment and the FDA changes a rule like that. So we're, we're just kind of screwed. So the, the point is, you know, we're, I'm a confident idiot at the top of Mount stupid going, yeah, I can make hand sanitizer. Why can't I? I've done all these other things. You know, why, why shouldn't I? So there's but, that. Yeah, but you're putting a team together. You're not delivering the hand sanitizer. You're not the, uh, what's the word? The chemist who's putting it together. Are you? <laughs> That's yeah, for sure. And that, that, yeah. that ultimately is a difference. So I do have a little bit of, so there, there's this very fine line between delusional and yeah. knowing what I don't know and willing to find out. And then hmm. charging forward, and that's that's ultimately what we've done. We yeah. every problem that puts us out of business at one point in the day, we have to find a solution for that problem. Sometimes we didn't know that problem existed hmm. in the prior twenty four hours, right? Yeah. But what we have found over the past eight weeks, where we're literally you know about ready to start production. By the way, the we were ordering the the raw materials, the ethanol to Mm. begin production when the FDA changed this rule and we can't order that particular ethanol anymore. That's how advanced the the problems become. So instead of me giving up in the Valley of despair, it's like, you know, and my partner the same and the whole team, the same, we just go, all right, somebody else will solve this. How do we solve it? Right. And Mm. you just, you go and you go and you go. So persistence, as we talked about earlier, mired or or armed with uh, coupled with perhaps humility, Mm we don't know what we're doing. 
but we're not ignorant, right? We're mm-hmm. going, we want to do the right thing. We want to deliver high quality. We're, we're doing everything we've got to do. But this journey, you know, up and down the mountains is, it's going to happen to us again and again as each subject comes up in this journey. So it is something that I continue to go through. And all of us on some level will go through these things. Yeah. I want to come back to the point of Mount Stupid and the guru thing and where people, they might not be in despair, but there is common knowledge that people go, look, if you don't know what you're doing, try and find a mentor. A mentor could be a call, someone feedback that you speak to, paid, unpaid or whatever. So that is smart because that's a realization. I don't have enough minute, uh, information here. They've probably listened to a few Tim Ferriss podcasts. He says, ask the right question uh, questions. Go and find someone successful and ask them to be your mentor and then pay accordingly to that, which is smart. But the the undoing part is to be sucked in by the wrong guru who is just flogging you a course that they've pieced together off the Internet and stolen from podcasts and other courses and put together. So there's there is another parallel universe there as well, where you're trying not to be stupid. You're being humble, but then you get scammed which is unfortunate again, which comes back to going into research. It comes you back into this loop again. It's it's the worst part of the, the equation, which is we have to do work, right? Mm. And and so the you know when somebody sell it so I I agree entirely by the way mentors are a good thing. Mm. Having having somebody who's been there done that who has the experience that's a very good thing. And there's there should be a, an exchange of value there somewhere whether it's cash up front or equity or whatever it is that I, I have no problem with any of that as long as they're qualified. Right. Mm-hmm. And you should, you should really do your work. A screenshot that can be manipulated in a thousand different ways is not enough of a reference check, right? Mm-hmm. You, you should really do your research. And this, this is where all of those tactics used by, uh, by the fake gurus on, on the planet and all the mm-hmm. manipulators and the predators is actually how I refer to them. That's where all of that, NLP stuff, all of this stuff is programmed to get you to do something that your gut tells you not to do, hmm. right? Where it, it literally goes against your your nature. You're, you know, yeah. you're like, ah. Your physiology, I don't, I don't. it goes against like what you, your, your, your uh, basic instincts. Right. So and you're yeah. right to say physiology. There's parts of it where you're like, gosh, I got the will. You know, I got that my hairs are standing up. But intellectually, you're being programmed to go, yeah, but what if, you know, but yeah. what if, right? And anybody who thinks that that's not possible, that that can't happen to them, go watch the Netflix documentary called The Push. Mm-hmm. So the, I, I, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing, but in 90 minutes, they uh, will try to convince uh, somebody just off the street to commit murder. And uh, it is an extraordinary um, uh, documentary about that anybody can do anything when given the right programming. And this, mm. this again is for you as a, as a, you know, vulnerable person, right. For you as, as uh, the prey for these predators, you should watch the push just so you arm yourself for you yeah. understanding how the world interacts with, um, you know, human nature, marketing, etc. Also reasonable to, to know the push, but yeah. it is extraordinary. And you will, you will find it is absolutely insane uh, what happens in this in this doc. And by the way, everything is safe. Everything's uh, no problem, but it is absolutely real. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Side B says, I'll increase your sales to eight figures and reduce your A cost to half 8% in seven days. Sign up now for just shy of oh, a million. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. So I, I, you know, my gut says no, but my mind <laughs> yeah. says maybe, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Maybe today's my day. Yeah, I, it's, how much does that cost? Yeah. yeah, well, that's a pretty good deal. Pretty good yeah. deal. And geez, all I have to do is sell a little, and that'll make a lot. Exactly. Right. Should we? Uh, is there any uh, takeaways? Last few words from you. Well, I, I only would remind people that if you begin with humility and you begin by saying, you know, any process, right? You don't. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Maybe it was Cy, <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Who talked about learning a an instrument? You don't pick up yeah. a guitar and expect to, you know, go on tour with. Uh, this is uh, Motley Crue. I don't know who's a who's a tour, you know, uh, yeah. band. Do they have guitars, Motley Crue? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll just we'll edit this later where it looks like I go. And hey, you don't pick up a guitar and go on uh, tour with Motley Crue. 
um, mm. on the, your first day, right? Because you don't know anything. And even if you get a couple things down, when you actually see people with experience, you go, okay, now I get it. That's different. Yeah. And you've got to put in the time to become an expert. And sometimes that means you got to do the hard work like research or validating or waiting even. That's even worse. All of those things are possible. Yeah. And finally, for me, trust your gut at all times. Even when your head says no, if your gut says, I think that's the, the natural instinct of a human being. If your gut said it's off, it's off. Agreed. Yeah. 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 Very, very wise words. Cool. So uh, which episode will this be coming out on awesomers.com podcast? I think, everybody, this will be on awesomers.com slash 185. So awesomers.com slash 185. And I'll try to put a couple of the graphs up there for the Dunning-Kruger yeah. effect. And by the way, this is not uh, something that I uh, have made up. Um, I would have called it the Danny-Steve effect uh, <laughs> if to get a, a little branding in there. But, no, this is, this is something that's real, and I, I want people to – you know, at least understand it, and then you can figure out where it fits into your life. Yeah, exactly. Just be vigilant. Take care of yourself. Um, guys, we'll see you back here tomorrow, 4 p.m. BST. Thank you, Steve, for joining us again. We'll be back with you next week. We'll announce next week's topic nearer the time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay home. Stay safe. Much love. Take care.